All right, gang, let's get this party started. So when we have a system, we usually want to do some kind of analysis, some physical system. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, you have to remember the basic block diagram of a system, which is put it right here somewhere, where you have one in and you have an input and you have an output. So, if, and we want to analyze the box in the middle. So how are we going to do that? Well, we want to create a signal to put in and we want to record the signal coming out. So in, this, uh, in these lectures, we're going to talk about the function generator and the oscilloscope to do those functionalities. All right, so here's the oscilloscope. We're going to go through initialization, waveform reading, waveform setting, and some, some analysis tools that are uh, built into this function generator. Okay, so let's begin. Let's talk about initializ initialization. First of all, you boot it up, just, you open it up. The first thing my, I suggest you do is hit the default setup button if you've got one. You might have had uh, previous users use this, etc., which is where the default setup comes in. But even then, if you forget to do that, um, some users may have set up some uh, measurement tools, okay, some analysis tools that are built in here. So one thing I like to do is clear everything out. So the way I do that is I go to measure, and I go right to clear measure, and then I clear all measurements. So now I've got nothing there. All right. Now, um, in terms of recording, of course, we want to record the output, but we also want to record the input going in. Well, good thing for us, we've got two BNCs here, two channels to record on the oscilloscope. Now, you'll see that uh, to turn on the two channels, you just push their numbers. So if I push two, you now see that I have a green one. The yellow one is channel one, the green one's channel two. And I, so that's great because I'm usually going to want to record two uh, signals, the input and the output. Now this, these little knobs underneath the numbers just adjust the bias on the screen. They don't actually affect the signal itself. So for example, if I know that I want a signal that's only going to, my signal's only going to be from zero volts and positive, then I'm going to slide my, um, I'm going to slide my bias lower in the screen so I can fill the screen fully. Now, in this video, we're not going to use both channels. I'm just going to focus on one, but obviously everything I teach you is um, going to be the same for channel two. So I'm going to turn that off. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and slide this down towards the bottom because the signal that I'm going to be playing with is only positive. All right, so the next thing in terms of initialization is we're going to have to set up the channel. So I'm going to push one, and you'll see, for example, now I can go back, let me do it again, push one, you're going to get a, a more functions that pop up here on the horizontal bar. So a couple of things I want you to pay attention to. One, it should be the DC coupling, the coupling should be DC for what we do. Also, in terms of impedance, you want one mega ohm. Now, there are reasons to use 50 ohms and reasons to use an AC coupling, but that's not for us. Uh, this is more for higher uh, frequency range, okay? So for us, we're always going to use one mega ohm and DC coupling. Now, let me just say a little bit about this one mega ohm. I want you to remember that the oscilloscope is trying to measure the system, and we don't want, in, in the process of measuring the system, affect the system. The final initialization that we want to do before we start collecting data is set up the probe. All right, so what do I mean? Or, or adjust the settings for the probe. Okay, we got to tell the oscilloscope what kind of probe we're using. Well, we could be using one of these probes. You've probably seen it, okay? Um, this interesting one with the, the clippy, okay, scope probe. Or we could technically use a BNC, okay? Totally sufficient for our frequency range, 
when you get now now why are these probes so fancy because they are useful and have been designed for also use in this really high frequency range that I was mentioning but we're gonna ignore that that's beyond the scope of our class and and this lecture so so which one do you use well it doesn't really matter okay but if you but you need to understand them so you can set the oscilloscope to tell it well how am I gonna do that well under after same place there's a probe button so right here you're gonna see that there is a attenuation factor okay so I'm gonna use this I'm gonna use this sort of right hand rule dial for on this oscilloscope to change the parameter so um, now a B and C is just a one-to-one -one. so I'm just gonna choose the one-to-one -one. but some probes for their own reasons um, are 10x probes so they have an attenuation of 10 so now how are you gonna know that well you gotta read the label and check your probe all right so you've got to make sure otherwise your voltage will be off by a factor of 10 if you're putting in the wrong um, the, the wrong attenuator so um, but if you're lucky some of these probes are uh, smart probes so you'll notice that this probe has a pin on it and you also notice that these new oscilloscopes have a ring this sort of gold ring uh, around the BNC so if I go ahead and plug in my smart probe you're gonna see that my probe setting jumped to 10 to 1 and it gr got grayed out so now I can't even use it it even tells me that this functionality doesn't work because it's smart it knows it's 10x now that said I don't trust it and I suggest this is why I, I I'm teaching you how to use this oscilloscope so that you can double check and make sure that it's the right amplification or attenuation okay so for us today we're just going to use the B and C there's no reason to use this now well, of course I will say this is nice I mean it's got a nice little clippy thing you can grab on you've got your ground clip and even you can pop this off and even uh, uh, analyze right into the uh, breadboard okay but for us we're just going to use the scope probe I'm sorry not the scope probe the BNC but even then I can get a piece like this that will plug in and then you've got clippies if that's what you want okay so let's go ahead and plug in our output from the function generator into the oscilloscope now I'm not going to talk about the setting up the function generator in this video but I've already preset it with a square wave of 10 Hertz and one volt peak to peak with an offset of a half a volt so that you can imagine it goes from zero volts up to one volt holds for a 20 uh, 20th of a second goes down goes to zero another 20th of a second and then back up giving you a period of one tenth of a second giving you 10 Hertz all right so um, in that sense now I got to get ready and set up the oscilloscope so that it's I can visualize this data all right and I don't want to be too zoomed in or too zoomed out otherwise I'm gonna maybe think that I, I don't have a signal when it's just not visualized on the screen all right so I'm gonna do some quick analysis to preset my oscilloscope before I even plug it in okay so let's talk about setting it up well first of all I've got to set up what the resolution is in the voltage range and I've got to set up the resolution in the time domain so the x-axis and the y-axis let's focus on voltage first well if I'm going to I need to know how many divisions I have well I technically have eight divisions but I'm starting I'm not going all the way down so I'm starting at the uh, first division so I only have seven divisions to fill up my my uh, my screen so if I have one volt then um, obviously a hundred volts per division will not get that'll only get me to 700 millivolts not to one volt but if I go to 200 then it'll get me to um, actually 200 will get me above one volt right because I've got seven so it's gonna take me to about 1.4 volts so somewhere between 100 and 200 I'm going to use 150. 150, if you think about it, gets me almost 
fills it up in seven divisions. So I'm going to use 150 volts, uh, millivolts per division. How do I change that? Well, this, for each channel, you can change that parameter. And right here, you've got this big knob. And I'm going to look on here, and I'm going to see that I'm going to start reducing it. And it only uh, gives me 100 millivolts or 200 millivolts in this case. I'm sure you can change that. But let's choose 200. We know 100 is not enough. So I'm going to choose 200 millivolts per division. So now it's set up. Should fill, you know, well, five, uh, five divisions in that screen. And then I'm going to do the time domain. Now, if I think about the time domain or the time axis, I've got 10 divisions. So if I want two periods, that gives me, uh, well, that's 100 milliseconds is one period. That's one tenth of a second. So I want 200 milliseconds for 10 divisions, which means I want 20 milliseconds per division. All right, let you think about that. So I'm gonna adjust it. How do I adjust it? There's only one knob for all the channels. It's this big horizontal knob. So I'm gonna play with that and I'm gonna go up to 20 milliseconds per division. So now I should be able, once I plug this in, I should see it fill five divisions in the X axis, I mean the Y axis, and two periods should fill the y-axis. So let's make sure, let's check it out, see if I messed anything up. All right, looks good. All right, now, I'm not saying you can't play with the knobs. Feel free. You wanna zoom in as much as you can so that you get the best resolution when you're saving the data. But it's a better way to go is to have a, a general idea of where to start and then tweak the knobs later. All right, so um, let's talk about, before we save the data, we might wanna do some simple analysis, all right? So let me play, let me actually show more periods. I'm just gonna adjust the y-axis. And now you see more periods in the screen. And maybe I wanna double check that the frequency is 10 hertz, all right? Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use that measurement that I cleared all the measurements, I'm gonna use it now. So I'm gonna to go to measure button, and I'm going to do add measure and you can choose different types but I'm going to choose frequency type and I'm going to do ch source one channel one add measurement and I'm good and now you can see on the screen that you have it all it's oscillating real close to 10 Hertz now um, I want to set up the acquisition mode all right so let me show you what that is. If I go to waveform and acquire, you'll see that there's an acquire mode. All right. Now normal is a great option. It's going to collect everything and display everything. All right. In both the signal and noise that is that you're going to find in there. So that's great. But a lot of times you don't want the noise. You want to get rid of the noise and you just want the underlying signal. That said, sometimes you do want the noise if you want to analyze what the frequency of that noise, etc. All right, but if you want to get rid of the noise, it's got a great function. If I hit, if I choose, you can choose a couple of options, um, but one of them is high resolution mode, and that filters it quite a bit. I'll let you play with that, but for most experiments, using high res is really great. All right, so this. And there's, of course, other measurement tools that you might be interested in. Um, I'm just highlighting one of them. All right. Now, let's save the data. Now, again, I would adjust this to fill whatever you want to fill. Fill the screen in Y and X before I'm ready to save. And then I'm going to hit stop. Okay, here's my run stop button. I can collect again. I'm going to hit stop. Now I'm happy with this. So I'm now going to save the data. So how do I do that? I come here to file and I hit save. Now this is also save and recall data, but I'm just gonna hit save. And now I'm gonna use this uh, option and I'm gonna choose, of course you can take an image along with data, but I'm interested in collecting data. So I'm gonna choose CSV file. Then I'm gonna choose save to, if I had a thumb drive, it would be an option that I could save to. Right now I'm not actually gonna save. And then finally, file name, you can change the file name and its default is scope. And the nice thing about this, most oscilloscopes is when you keep saving data, it increments a number. 
So it's scope zero, then scope one, then scope two, and you don't have to actually change that name. The changing the name only changes the scope part of it, not the number. And then finally, very important, let's talk about, you gotta go to settings. Now, let's talk about settings. By default, actually, this length is 2000, all right? So here's what that means. You've got a certain, uh, certain sampling rate on the screen, and so therefore you could analyze how many seconds and what the sampling rate and how many data points you're saving. The problem is, which I don't like about this oscilloscope actually, remember other oscilloscopes may be different and, and they are, they, they don't limit you like this one does. This one decimates the signal or the data, meaning it lowers the frequency and only saves a subset of that data, which, which frustrates me because I'd like to control that myself. But that's what we have. So I recommend increasing from 2,000 to at least 10,000 or more data points, but be aware your sampling rate will change compared to what the screen says it's sampling at. All right. Um, now you just hit press to save. And if you had something in there, uh, you would be able to save it. All right. So um, I hope this helped and I will see you next time.